I'm indeed Christophe de Wette and I'm working at TIER. TIER is a research group which is hosted at the University of Amsterdam, Groningen and Maastricht. And we're looking at evidence-based education. Evidence-based education is a philosophy that we try to see what works. What works in education? And if you expand something in education, please try to examine first by research, by sound research, whether this really works and whether this is really effective. And so, what are we going to do? We're going to look at evaluation research during this presentation. If those are the policymakers, this little girl is the policymakers, policymakers, civil servants, teachers, all those kind of people, they run. And we as evaluation researchers, we're trying to look at how fast they run, whether they exactly run, how, where are they running to, uh, etc. So we try to evaluate how well the policy works. And during this presentation, we're going to look at early school leaving. What is early school leaving? What is the issue? What works in early school leaving? Does a naming and shaming approach work? Does a performance subsidy work? Does truancy policy work? Uh, does um, qualification law works? And finally, I'll give you the, the conclusion. But So we're going to look at several policies which have been uh, established in the Netherlands and to see what exactly works and what can we learn about that. First of all, a definition. An early school leaver is defined by the European Commission as a young person between the age of 12 and 23 who leaves education without a degree or without a lower or with only a lower secondary level degree. So it's a person in the Netherlands who does not have an MBO, a vocational education training of level two, who does not have a HAVO degree, so a general degree, or a pre-university degree, a VWO degree. And we're going to uh, look at those students because those students, those early school leavers, they have only bleak prospects. Those students, it has been shown in literature that those students um, have only, uh, have only higher, have higher uh, unemployment risk, have higher uh, lower health status, um, have lower educated children on their turn, so it's a really vicious circle. Um, they have huge costs to society as well. They have increased costs uh, of criminal activities. Uh, they have a lower social cohesion. And they have a lower economic, um, they, they create a lower economic growth. So those kind of people are really problematic. And that's why the Lisbon Council, the European Council uh, in Lisbon in 2000, said that we should reduce the number of early school leavers. We should reduce the number of early school leavers from 20% at that time in 2000 to about 10% uh, in 2010. Ten years later, from 2000 to 2010, we didn't succeed. So the, the level of early school leaving in the Netherlands is still around 12%. Um, and that's why in the new um, agenda, the Europe 2020 agenda, early school leavers should be further reduced to 8%. So it's picking up where we were uh, in 2010. Um, and also in the Netherlands, there is a national target. So in the national, every country tries to create a national target from this European target. In the Netherlands, they said they would try to reduce the number of early school leavings from 71,000 in 2002 to 35,000 in 2010 and further to 25,000 in 2016. So very ambitious goals to reduce this group of pupils, this group of uh, students who, didn't, um, who did not obtain a, a degree. And to do so, in the Netherlands, they created a decentralized policy. First of all, there is the Ministry of Education. They created a project directie, so a special focus group within the Ministry of Education to reduce early school leaving. They created next regional dropout authorities, authorities which have some influence and which can create the policy, which can establish the policy uh, together with the municipalities, together with uh, the school group and together with the local responsible at school. So it's a really decentralized policy in which the ministry creates some policy measures and schools can adopt those policy measures based on the, on the local circumstances. The first thing what they did is to measure early school leaving. So first we need to know who are those people, who are the people who leave school without a secondary degree. And this is um, the first step which they did. It's called the Basisregister Onderwijs number. It's a BRIN number, it's an, a number for every student. Every student gets a number. If you are in the register on October 1st last year and you left education without a degree on October uh, in the next year, then you're assigned as an early school leaving. We are using this data, this BRON data, 
It's a data set of all students in the Netherlands, so we have all students in the Netherlands in this data file. It's a data file from 2004 to 2009. You can obtain information from the school, you can obtain information from the postcode, which you can match with uh, data from Statistic Netherlands. So it's a very rich data source on every student. And every, so it's, this data source is used for policy evaluation. And using this BRON data, the Ministry of Education is trying to use a naming and shaming approach. So they name the regions and the schools which are performing well, which are reducing early school leaving. They are shaming the, the, uh, the schools and the regions which do not succeed in early school leaving reduction. And this is, um, this is an example of this um, source. It's on the website for tederschoolverlaten.nl. And you can find for every region, for every municipality, and also for every school, what's the number of uh, students in, this, uh, in the school, what is the number of uh, early school leavers in the school, and how well are they performing. So you can see that some regions are dark blue, those are the bad performing regions, the shamed regions. Some regions are performing quite well, those are the, the light blue, those are the, the good performing regions. In the, Netherlands, in the Netherlands, the ministry is using this kind of graphs, this kind of numbers, to put some uh, prestation subsidies. So they're subsidizing schools, giving them 2,500 euro per early school leaver who reduces early school, or who does not, um, per the number of early school leavings, who does not reduce, who does not uh, um, fall out, who does not drop out in comparison to the base year 2005-2006. And we tried to look at this, this graph, we said, Maybe in this graph, if you look at this, the municipality of Almere, if you look at the municipality of um, Lelystad, if you look at the municipality of Amsterdam, maybe the, the kind of population in those um, municipalities is different. So we try to correct those numbers for the population characteristics. And if you try to correct them, you can see that, um, for instance, if we compared the city of Amsterdam with the city of Rotterdam, and we said, what if a student who drops out in Rotterdam would he have dropped out in the city of Amsterdam if he would have been born in Amsterdam? So we tried to reverse the logic. And if you do this, you see that students in Rotterdam basically have the same probability and the same odds um, to, to drop out in Rotterdam and Amsterdam. If you do this for the city of Almere, you compare comparable cities in the city of Almere, who is in dark blue, then you see that if you were born in a similar city um, as in Almere, so with the same selective migration, with the same population characteristics, uh, then you would have been dropped out in those regions as well. If you do this for Lelystad, you find a slight difference. In Lelystad, it seems that policymakers can put more effort or can do something slightly better because uh, there we didn't find this uh, insignificance. In the new convenance, the new gentleman's agreement between the Ministry of Education and those regions, uh, this has been adopted, so where the ministries used to look at those raw figures, uh, those raw numbers of early school leavers, they changed the policy and they tried to uh, incorporate uh, the population characteristics as well. So this is the naming and shaming. If you look at this performance subsidy, the performance subsidies can really work. Performance subsidy, you give 2,500 euros um, to schools who are doing good, um, so to schools who are really reducing the number of early school leavers. And one problematic issue is that if you were using, if you were putting a lot of effort between, before 2005 to early school leavers, you were already performing quite well, and so you were already quite low on early school leavers. So it can be considered as very unfair to the schools. So that's why uh, we suggested to do this on a, on a yearly basis. So look at the current number of early school leavers and compare this for the performance subsidy. And this has been changed uh, in the new convenant, in the new gentleman agreement uh, with the ministry as well. And this is considered as more fair uh, by, by the schools. If you look at truancy, truancy reporting and truancy policy, truancy we first looked, is truancy important? So does truancy really matter for early school leaving? And we did so on data from the city of Amsterdam. Uh, using uh, fixed regression uh, models, we try to, to control for as many things as we know as possible. Um, and we saw that if you were a truant in a school, then you had a 3.5 uh, percentage points higher probability of dropping out. And this compares to a 7.8 probability of early school leavers. So it's really a huge effect. If you were a truant in a school, then you really have a very high odd to dropping out. So that's why a lot of municipalities were uh, working on this truancy reporting, we're working on this truancy policy, and we 
again on data from the municipality of Amsterdam, we try to look if you just simply report the number of truants, is it reports who is a truant and who is not a truant, whether this works, whether this reduces the number of early school leavers. And we found that it doesn't really matter if you just report the number of students. So if you just list the students, does this matter? It doesn't really matter. Um, we did this by a quasi-experiment. We looked at schools um, who were not having a truancy reporting in, in the past. We looked at schools who had a truancy reporting in the past. And as every school was obliged to have truancy reporting in the future, um, since 2005 on, we didn't see a real difference, only for the better schools, for the better uh, VWO schools. Yeah. Truancy is uh, in Dutch verzuim. So it's students who, were, who should go to school, uh, but who are not, they are just playing around, uh, who are just at home, etc. So truancy reporting on itself doesn't work, but if you look at truancy policy, so an active policy, we did it for schools in the province of Limburg, um, that really works. So if you are reporting them, and if you go to the parents, go to the students and say, you should have been in school where you weren't, that really works. So this kind of measure, a truancy policy, works for, a poli for early school leaving reduction. It has a significant effect on the, the, the early school leaving rate. It reduces early school leaving by 2.3 uh, percentage points, which is quite high. It's a quite effective and a quite uh, cost-effective uh, measure. Finally, if you look at the qualification law, the qualification law is a law which says that students should go to school until they reached uh, the age of 18 or until they reached a starter qualification. A starter qualification is an MBO2 uh, or a HAVO or a VBO uh, degree, so they should reach an upper secondary education degree. This law came into, uh, in, into effect in 2007. Students born before August 1st, 2007, they should um, they were exempted from the law. Students born after August 1st, 2007, they, could, um, they, they were um, holded by the law. So again, we used this kind of information in a quasi-experimental setup. And we saw that if you, the qualification law really worked, so it seems that it has an effect on the reduction of early school leaving. So by obliging students to go, in effect, one year longer to school, it reduces early school leaving. But the, the effect was mainly driven um, by uh, the control group. So control group students, students uh, who were not holded by the law, they significantly more uh, dropped out in the last year they could drop out. So it seemed that this kind of law, this kind uh, that created an unwanted uh, effect, it seems that students just before significantly dropped out because of what they call in Dutch the Grundblock. Uh, so by employers who were attracting those students going to the labor markets just grasping this last opportunity to create or to have some uh, cheap labor. So those kind of measures, it seems that the Dutch policymakers are doing quite well on some of those. Some of them, they, they listen to research, so the evidence-based strategy uh, works uh, in parts. And this brings me to the conclusion, so naming of shaming uh, is unfair if you, unless you correct for the population characteristics. Truancy reporting as such does not work. An active truancy policy, this seems to work. And an increase in uh, compulsory education age, this works. Although the effect is mainly driven by control group students, the control group students uh, drove this effect. I have some references, and this brings me to ask you if there are any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. There's a question. Johan Maarschen. It's a very interesting study, but I would be curious, to be honest, why do people leave earlier school? And I didn't find an answer to that question in your story. And somehow I would have the feeling that the reason why people are leaving earlier school could also help to understand, if you understand that, it could also help you to explain what's going on. And what, could you say something more about that? Yeah, so it's, it's mainly uh, motivation, it's mainly the, the, the environment of the students. So we're, we're doing this as well in, in recent studies. We're trying to look at uh, what if you work with the parents, what if you work uh, with an, an active truancy with parents, etc. So does this increase the motivation of the students and does this keep them at school as well? Uh, but it's mainly um, peers, it's mainly motivation of students which creates them to drop out. 
Yeah. But is, is there also something like quality of education, primary schools or secondary schools? Is, have you done yeah. some research on that? Is there a correlation between dropouts and the quality, good, bad, or mediocre? Yeah. And it, we looked at when does it matter where you, what is the most effective way to, to look at students, so to look at uh, the circle of education. And it seems that as early as you begin, the more effective it is. So if you begin working on early school leaving very early in primary education, even in pre, uh, in kindergarten, so this really matters for early schooling. It seems that motivation, as your, it's related to your question, motivation influences throughout this education circle from primary education to secondary education. And then suddenly at the age of 15, at the age of 16, students say, oh, that's enough for me. I, I, I quit school at that time. But it's, it matters, the, the link between primary education, secondary education, and the link between um, pre-vocational education uh, and vocational education, between v VMBO and MBO, this link should be better, the link between primary education and secondary education. It's a real circle, uh, and it's a continuous improvement which should be uh, established. Yeah. But there could also be f uh, 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 criteria or factors uh, who stimulate students leaving school because of the quality or lack of opportunities for students yep. to take another course or go to another school or yeah they, they call this the push and pull factors yeah push and pull factors those are kind of factors just as the labor market if you see for instance if there is an upturn in the labor market then more people want to um, want to leave school because they can earn some money uh, push factors are the school are the teachers teachers who are um, the quality of teachers and always uh, that good they, they don't give credits to the students for instance and all those kind of things matter. But we didn't look at um, those kind of uh, measures because it's not really a policy measure. Uh, we tried to look at what exactly did the ministry and how did they evaluate it. But there is a lot of literature on push and pull factors on uh, one doesn't matter, uh, one uh, should one uh, look at early school leaving, etc. Yeah. Okay. There's a question over here. My name is Sibon Schim van der Loof from the School of Economics. And um, I couldn't quite make out from your picture with the light blue and the dark blue what Zwolle had, for example. My idea would be Zwolle, where I've been the same, is that a lot of people graduate, but they, uh, their diploma is worthless. And this leads to the, to the, to the question whether this school leaving, early school leaving uh, Concentrating on that doesn't give perverse incentives to uh, to make people give a diploma, whatever. Yeah, it's not whatever. Uh, early school thing. It, it has been shown in a lot of literature that those people do have a job in the beginning, so they leave school because they they, f they get a job, they have a job. But after the first economic crisis, um, people they they are fired, and then. It's very difficult to, to get a job again. So it's a, it's a minimal credential to have a long-term employment on the labor market. So even for people in, in Zwolle, for instance, they, they, they might have been difficulties to find a job uh, in the beginning. But with a start qualification, with a, with a higher secondary degree, it's much easier to, to keep your job and to, to, to change jobs over time uh, and to improve the quality of life, to improve the quality of your children in life. So early school leaving is really an issue which matters and which has some huge effects both to society, both to the students itself and, and their children and their, their later careers. So it's uh, and I'm, I'm not sure where Zwolle performs, I should have a, a detailed look indeed. No, but what I'm, I'm, I'm meaning, shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't there be, uh, shouldn't there be uh, a, a measure of quality of, of, of education? Yeah. That's not the case indeed. If you just count early school leaving, it's just now at, as, a, as a head count measure. So you are an early school leaving or you are not. You could look at a, a more um, comprehensive measure. So what did you learn in school and how far did you learn? Um, and this is what they're trying to do um, in, in recent um, policy measures or um, which are going to establish to work with modules. And if you, every time you get a module, you obtain a degree or a certificate. And by the certificate, they add up until you obtain a fully degree. Uh, and that's, it's a more, it's not a head count, it's not a zero one, but it's then, there are distinction between, and this gives some, some policy uh, again. As, so this, this, 
this is indeed what policymakers are trying to do related to your question to to look zero or one and, and in between. Okay, over there, Harm. Thank you, Harm Osmus. Um, the European Commission defined early school leavers as people between 12 and 23, you said. So that means there's also an interesting um, level at university levels. Um, so in the Netherlands, um, there is dropout. Um, Maastricht University is, is, is doing quite well, but even we have dropout. Um, from your studies, is there anything you can advise or say, or have you looked at dropout at university level where improvements could be made or these, these naming and shaming measures? Or is yeah. there, are there parallels between your studies or do you know of other studies? Yeah. In fact, the, the European Commission is looking, so if you were between the age of 18 and 23, but you did not obtain a high school degree, so people at university are normally already beyond, they already do have a high school degree. But uh, the early literature or the earliest literature on early school leaving uh, is always on university because there are data or there used to be a lot of data on, um, on, on universities. It's not the real early school leaving as defined in, in this research, uh, but dropout at uh, secondary or at uh, universities uh, is different, but in a sense it gives the same pattern because it's again about motivation, about wrong study choice, uh, about um, you don't like the environment, um, about peers' effects, so it, it gives the same incentives to to, um, to, 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 quit, to quit with university. So a lot of early studies are about um, early school leaving or school leaving uh, at university level. But what could we do? I, it's yeah, creating an attractive environment, creating, working with with, with the students, giving them, uh, an, it's the same thing which uh, they try to do in the convenant, so in the gentleman's agreement, try to. To, to, to be as close as possible to the students and give them good advice, give them good study advice, make that they change, they look for the, the right track, uh, that they don't have to switch between tracks because, because that's really um, detrimental for the students. Would you say that, because what I saw on one of your slides is that, uh, for instance, in the southern part of this province, in Limburg, we have quite some dropouts in Maastricht, Sittard, Glein, and in Heerle. Uh, your research, I think it's for the whole country, what you're doing. <coughs> Would you say that if you do some research in this environment here, Maastricht, Sittard, Glein, and Heerle, uh, would you find some more specific reasons for dropout in this region? That's my first question. The second is, would you advise to concentrate a research for this region in order to prevent this high number of dropouts in the province? Yeah. So first of all, to, to, to your first question, is there a difference in early school leaving motivation or et cetera between the province of Limburg and other provinces? There definitely is. So if you look at the big four at different cities, the patterns of students who are living in cities is different from the patterns in students who are uh, located in, in rural and countrysides, in small provinces, uh, as Maastricht. If you look at the uh, city of Almere, for instance, has a totally different population, city of, uh, of Maastricht, for instance. So that really changes, and that's also why the, the, the policy is very decentralized. So they, they, they try to adapt the policy as well as possible to the, to the local situation. Um, so that's uh, related right to your first question. Your second question. Um, can we do something different in, in Limburg or should we do something different in Limburg than in other cities? I think so. So you, you should adopt um, it. You should adopt the, the, the research also to it. So that's why we look at different municipalities. Um, we are funded by municipalities. We are funded by the ministry. But also as the municipalities are, funded, are funding us, uh, we try to look, for instance, Maastricht is part of this uh, funding organization. It's uh, part by NISIS, so the, the sector organization. And we, we try to look specifically at, um, uh, at, at particular situations. So, for instance, the, the active truancy policy was part of uh, LVO schools. So, it's an, in, in schools in, in uh, the area of Limburg, what do they do and does this work? Uh, we did this for Almere as well. So, what do they do? Does it work? We did it for Zaanstad. So, that's, you see that there are differences uh, in policy implementation and it matters depending on the population, depending on the, the circumstances whether this works. So it's definitely, even if you research this for one 
re region or one municipality, it's definitely interesting to examine whether it works on a different place as well. Okay. Other questions? Over there. Yeah, Hildegard. Um, is there also research done across the borders? Because in the light of the study, is it in the EU region different policies or what my experience is with qualification, continental Europe very often looks on formal qualifications. While if you take the UK, it very often has the so-called alternative routes, which gives possibility by vocational experiences in the end to compensate for the lack of formal qualification. Is there comparable research done in other yeah. countries? Yeah, there definitely is. So there is, for instance, um, a very nice website from the United States where they have what works. And it's a website with a lot of policy measures, and they give by experiments, by quasi experiments, uh, to see what works and what is really effective in reducing early school leaving. And the same thing happens for, um, for, for uh, the United Kingdom, for instance. There are some uh, attention to early school leaving. If you look just across the border to Flanders, there is few attention at the moment to early school leaving, so there's few policy measures which have been taken there, so we can't learn too much uh, from Flanders. But also uh, from France, for instance, there is some, uh, some work, and you can work, uh, you can uh, learn from that. And that's also what, what people do, so they, they look across, and that's also part of our job as advisor of ministry. We try to, to, to show or to, to detect what works in other countries and to, to suggest this at seminars. And that's also an, a good thing, I think. Last question over there. Uh, Andre Postema, I wanted to come back to the relationship between <coughs> a truancy and a dropout on the university level. Uh, here in Maastricht, we, uh, mo most of the time we have kind of an obligation to show up. Uh, have you studied or are there studies that investigate uh, obligations to show up at a university level and, uh, and drop out? I'm not aware of those studies. I, I think there definitely are uh, because it, it relates a lot of to motivation. So if you are truant at university, you are probably less motivated to come to courses and to study for it. Uh, but I'm not aware of exact studies uh, who looked at truancy uh, at universities. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Christoph de Witte. <laughs>